In the autumn of 1928, the newlyweds, Liang and Lin, had just returned to China from the U.S. They went to Mukden to teach at National Northeastern University. Three months earlier, the Huang Buchun incident had occurred, when the general of the Northeastern Army, Zhang Zolin, was killed in a railway bombing. In this time of crisis, Zhang Shuliang succeeded his father to become the commander-in-chief, and he also doubled as the president of National Northeastern University. National Northeastern University had been established by Zhang Zolin in 1923. The young general, Zhang Shuliang, resolved to cultivate pragmatic skills to strengthen Manchuria and to promote modernization so as to disabuse Japan of any ambitions to invade. National Northeastern University consisted of six schools. Within five years, it became one of the top universities in China. The first Chinese Olympian, Liu Changchun, who competed in the 1932 Olympics, had been a student at the university. Today, the general office of the Liaoning Provincial Government is housed in the former Science and Engineering Building, where the former Department of Architecture was located. In the autumn of 1928, when Liang and Lin arrived, the first class of students in the Department of Architecture had already enrolled. Liang Suchong, 27 years old, became the dean. There were only two teachers in the department, Liang and Lin. They modeled the curriculum upon that of their alma mater, while adding Chinese palace history, construction rules, and oriental art history. Their goals were to honor both Eastern and Western architectural practices and to nurture architects with an aesthetic capacity for Chinese architecture. Europeanization was the order of the day, and all Chinese joined the craze. This was a tragic period for Chinese architecture, as ill-informed craftsmen copied Western styles indiscriminately. Western architecture, practical and designed for convenience, was applauded in our nation. However, the craftsmen, devoid of aesthetic perceptions, randomly mixed Western elements with Chinese practices, thus completely destroying Chinese aesthetics. Over the last decade, China has produced a foreign style of architecture, which is not only foreign to China, but also foreign everywhere else. Facing this challenge, our department must be clear about our goal, which is to restore Chinese architecture and to provide basic architectural education for committed youths. China has enjoyed a long history of architectural development, and yet it has not developed its own methods to study architecture. China boasts of a great ancient civilization, and yet it lags behind others in terms of producing its own system of scientific knowledge. At this moment, a new generation, informed by both Chinese and Western studies, has made its debut. The Department of Architecture at National Northeastern University is among the earliest efforts of this kind in China. One year after Liang Sicheng and Lin Huayin joined at National Northeastern University, their schoolmates at the University of Pennsylvania, Chen Zhe and Tong Jun, and Cai Fang Yin from the Department of Architecture at MIT also returned to China and joined them thus expanding the team of experts. While teaching, these energetic youths also established their own Liang Chen Chong Chai architectural firm. In 1929, President Zhang awarded a prize for a competition to design a school logo for the university. Lin Huiyin won the contest and received the prize of 400 silver dollars. During that summer, Liang and Lin's first child was born. In memory of their late father, Liang Zhuchao, they named their daughter Zai Bing. 
Despite the intense and exciting work at the university, the cold climate here debilitated Huiyin. Her pulmonary disease returned. In the winter of 1930, she resigned from her position and returned to Beiping with her one-year-old daughter. Ten years earlier, a strange breeze in London had brought a remarkable poet to modern Chinese literature, Xu Jumo. As he remarked, since then his thoughts tended to write in lines. Ten years later, another poet surfaced, and a new name appeared in poetry circles, Lin Huiyin. This is definitely your hand, singing, 心芒下松影间有我独步静听我听我听出了琴琴歌者的身心枝头的素鸟修经我们以心心相印静听着这深夜里弦子的声动一声听从我心底穿过我懂的但我怎能应和我懂的但我怎能应和。In 1931, Xu Jimou was residing in Shanghai, and he occasionally taught in Beiping. Commuting between Beiping and Shanghai, he visited Lin Huiyin in the fragrant hills. Huiyin, who was still convalescing, was much delighted to see him and was inspired by his poetry. Their friendship had stood the test of time. In the summer of 1931, Xu Jumou saw Lin Huiyin off from fragrant hills and wrote to her later that night. This afternoon, a muse suddenly came to me. I kept smoking and emptied two pots of tea. Within two hours, I conjured this up. This poem, You Leave, is the last poem Xu Jimou wrote for Lin Huiyin. You go, I also go. We will again separate. You go on that road. 你放心走。你看那街灯一直亮到天边。你只需要跟从这光明的直线。On November 19th, 1931, Xu Jimou had planned to travel from Shanghai to Beiping to attend a lecture for foreign ambassadors organized by Lin Huiyin on Chinese architectural arts. Xu Jimou's arrival was delayed. It was a grim winter day when the plane he took, which was used for mail delivery, crashed in Shandong province.
In the summer of 1931, Liang Shicheng moved back to Beiping. Tong Jun took over as head of the department. Within a few months, however, the September 18, 1931 incident occurred, and the Japanese invaded the northeast. The students and teachers at the university all fled inland. In 1932, Liang Shicheng sent a cordial letter of congratulations when the first class in the Department of Architecture graduated in Shanghai. Upon your graduation, sadness and joy are intermingled in my heart. In today's China, the masses have no idea what architecture is. Some regard it as bricks and tiles. Others assume it is carved.